So this is a quick look in the box of the uh, SDKFZ265 uh, Kleiner PZ BEF WG1 initial production. I won't try and pronounce the German um, words here that these are abbreviated. This is basically the command version of the Panzer 1 uh, B. Uh, so it's got the five road wheels and the um, idler in the middle of the chassis as opposed to the A which had four wheels and the idler ran on the ground as well as the fifth wheel and the idler. Um, so this is a Dragon Smart kit which means it's got a few old um, sprues from their original Panzer 1 um, B boxing and then it's got a few updated sprues to bring it into line with this. Uh, there was a previous boxing of um, uh, the command version of the Panzer 1 B um, and then this is uh, includes parts to make the initial production. So that's the very early production, which is seen here on the box art. And um, if you look on the side here, uh, you can see where mine was purchased there, through Model Center, which is local to me. And you've got um, six, uh, six options here on the side. And as you can see, that um, these four are the initial ones. So that it's basically... Uh, defined by not having a cupola on the top and then you've got these two which are the more common uh, versions and you've got three that are in the uh, pre-war sort of up to 1937 I think it was um, free tone camouflage that the Germans used and then you've got the um, later versions of the early camouflage so you've got the straight German grey and then German grey with the brown on over the top and looking at the dragon instructions it's the typical stuff that we come to um, find from their kits there's quite a lot of uh, stuff used from older uh, of, of older kits with um, sprues where you're only using small parts like B for instance all of this blued out stuff is uh, not to be used small um, threat of photo etch down here with a few uh, parts for the um, aerial uh, or antenna holder here that runs down the side we've got some pre-bent metal um, frames here for the uh, aerial around the top of the uh, tank and um, some metal rings here for the road wheels as well. So looking at the instructions this is a general sort of fold out way that Dragon do it and then with step one as with most tanks is starting with the uh, lower hull and road wheels so making that up which is quite simple there's um, the rings here um, I'll see if I can find the bag of them so these are pre-cut uh, etch metal rings here. They go onto the outside and the inside of the road wheel. It's a little bit of overkill. You would have thought they could probably um, mould that on, and I'm not sure what the benefit of keeping it separate is, but we might find that once we get into the kit. Uh, and then we've got some uh, some of those long pieces of photo etch here run down the side to the fender. And I imagine that gives it a, a thinner look from the underside. Um, all the way throughout here we've got paint call outs where needed and that is uh, Gunn's um, colours, Mr Hobby or Mr Colour call outs. And then once we're into step four through to nine here it shows uh, completing the lower hole and starting on the um, superstructure above and uh, this is a framework here with um, armour parts added to it. Uh, to create that, which gives it probably a scale thickness, I'm imagining. Um, but it's all it, it's it's a bit of a, a, a better way to get the moulding process as well as opposed to doing it in all in one go. Um, you've got a few parts of um, interior detail here, which are left over from a previous release, I believe, which had some um, interior details to it. And then we're making up the hatches on the back here as well, the superstructure. And the viewports are um, included uh, in clear parts, and you've got internal detail as well as the exterior detail there as well. And then we bring the superstructure down to the lower hole and get it all together with the wheels on. You might probably want to leave the wheels off depending on how you're going to show it as far as getting the um, road wheels painted and stuff. And then there are photo etched parts, uh, replacement parts here for all of the tools. They do come with moulded on parts if you prefer to use that. Uh, so you've got the options of, bo of both here. And um, 
then it's making up the framework here on the top which um, of the antenna which is the radio mass that runs around the top of the vehicle so this is two pieces of pre-bent wire uh, that go through these parts here which are R3 which are um, hollowed out uh, and they are small plastic parts here which are on R uh, here and you might be able to see that they've been hollowed out there and the wire fits through those and then you line them up with the upright parts which are shown here in the instructions which is S3 uh, so maybe a little bit fiddly, so uh, care take needs to be taken around this part. And then it's showing placements on the um, upper hole here for the tools and how everything gets lined up. And then over the page it's showing there um, information on lining up the antenna there as well. And bringing everything together, including getting tracks on. And um, that completes... Um, the kit as far as the initial production, so that's without the cupola, that's just got the two um, hatches there on the top. Uh, tracks are magic tracks, which is uh, uh, good. Um, I don't think any of their Panzer 1 kits um, have got the DS tracks, which are the Dragon's form of um, vinyl tracks, so that's good. And these should be uh, very easy, I've done these before, you just slot them together, use a slow drying liquid glue, you can form them around the wheels get the correct sag if you um depending on what you need and then if you leave one link undone you you do then have uh the opportunity to move them and take them off the wheel so you can paint them separately so that's how i do it and here this line denotes whether you're doing an initial or an early um and if you're going to move on from the initial then a cupola goes on the top here as well and you've got the, op the option whether you put the uh, antenna mast on or not depending on what um marking option you pick and then on to the marking options. Uh, as usual with most Dragon kits, unfortunately, recently, these are all denoted to um, unidentified units, uh, all based in Germany, and all, um, mostly 1938, with the exception of these two, which are 1936. Showing the early camouflage, that's uh, this one here, from 1938 which is an early production and then you've got the two initial productions here which are showing um, dated to 1936 and these all have the green base colour which is like a field grey colour and then um, brown and dark yellow added over the top in a free tone camouflage and then you've got uh, this one here is German grey all over with camo patches of the early brown colour which is like a red brown and then these two up the top here are German grey all over. So a nice lot of marking details, it would have been a bit more um, helpful if you had some background on what the units were and uh, where they were based etc. I'll be doing a Spanish version so it will be initial much like one of these two here. And uh, typical stuff that we come to get th uh, expect from Dragon. I think this is one of the uh, older sprues here, but quality is very good. There's no flash, um, not much burring, um, nothing that's noticeable anyway to any other manufacturer. And um, everything is very cleanly and crisply moulded on very nice sort of solid plastic. So um, no problem there for sanding and cleaning up. So that's sprue A. Then we've got sprue B. This one is an older uh, part, I'm sure. And um, this has parts for the front fender and a few small fixings for the uh, superstructure. Not sure if um, very much of this is used at all in this particular kit. And then we've got a few more sprues here. Um, which start making up parts for the superstructure. There you've got uh, probably... Uh, one of the only new sprues in this kit, which is uh, makes it the initial, so it's a new roof with the initial version for just the hatches without the cupola. And then we've got um, the superstructure here being made up, so there's the separate parts that go on to um, this part on the A sprue. So they go along the side there to make up the armour pieces. Uh, very nicely moulded, especially here with the um, weld seams running down the sides of the, the angled parts of the piece of armour there. A nicely moulded piece here for where the antenna rests, which is uh, already pre-shaped, which I don't know if you can see there, which is very nice. 
Um, and here's the fenders, which has got extremely good detail on the top with the crisscross pattern. And then underneath, there is a lip there. Um, so it would be interesting to see how that etched metal um, lip goes on to replace that. Um, or it might be on a different part. We might come to that. No, these are the only fenders. Then we're on to the sprues for the wheels. So we've got two duplicates here. And um, one sprue has had this bit taken off presumably because you don't need it. Um, wheels are very nicely moulded there, no problem um, whatsoever. Nice bolt detail inside there. Um, and um, you really couldn't want more from that. Very clean on the spokes inside, so uh, no problem there. And then we've got two duplicates here for the sprockets. Uh, so that's two of J-Sprue. And um, again, no problem here whatsoever. Uh, good spring detail here on the um, parts to where the wheels are going to go and then attach to the bottom of the hole. And um, nice again on the spokes there for the idler. So nice to see that there, no problem. And then this makes up the last few parts of the sprues. So there are the parts for um, the antenna mat. And then these parts here from the R sprue um, go on top of these parts there. So they're hollowed out underneath and they've got a um, a small rod that goes inside. So that should give a nice fixing point. Um, again, all very cleanly moulded and um, a few spare tools there. This is the cupola if you want to make it an early version instead of initial. And a few parts here, as you can see, that's the leftover hatch there for the roof of the... Um, Panzer 1B, so as you can see this is a sprue used again and yeah no problem there, um, it is a little bit dated some of these tools, I mean they're not as crisp as the uh, most recent releases from Dragon and then we've got the one hole, one piece tub there for the hole which is uh, very nicely moulded um, and there's the answer, sorry right okay so going back to those fenders that I showed earlier so these fenders are not to be used here um, so although they're very nice, you actually have fenders already moulded onto the side of this um, uh, one piece hole here and then the etch metal pieces are used to give that an edge. So that will give that a nice fine edge and make it look sort of scale thickness. So that's a nice touch there from Dragon. Um, hard to know if there's any way around that if you didn't want to use the photo etch because these are already moulded on so you don't have the option to use these which are perfectly adequate so um, you have to be a little bit careful there if you're a bit new to photo etch um, but all in all nice detail right the way over and underneath there so um, no complaints there very thinly moulded here with the parts of the um, uh, hole that protrude outwards and it's, that's very nice to see that. That actually looks very much scale thickness there. So that's nice to see. And then we've got one sprue of clear parts here, which make up the vision blocks for the outside and the interior parts as well. So that creates, gives them a, a lot of detail. These have uh, come about mainly because of the interior kits that were produced uh, for the Panzer I um, early on in the Dragon range, so they've just carried that through. Um, you don't need that interior detail for these obviously, but it's quite nice if you want to open them up, you see something um, from the outside, you see part of the vision block from the inside as well, so it's a, it's a good option. And then we've got the pre-bent uh, piece of wire there for the antenna, so you've got two parts, this bit here is separate and is meant to go on the back using those um, parts on the R sprue. And there you might be able to see the shape of it. So that's a very nice touch. Uh, great addition. It would be very hard to bend that, I'm sure, yourself. So uh, it's nice to see that. And then we've got the bag of magic tracks, which, uh, you know, a lot being said on these, there's no problem with, with magic tracks. They're the best thing Dragon ever did, I think, really. Um, uh, they slot together very nicely. They do need glue. And um, then you can mould them around the wheels to get the correct uh, shape of the track. And then we've got a few photo etch parts here, so um, there's some more rings for the wheels, which you've already got in a separate bag as well, included. Uh, so that might be a little bit tedious, but um, persevere with that nonetheless. Then this part, 
And this is the piece of photo etch which um, has the side parts there, um, the very thin parts there that go on the edge of the fenders that I mentioned, which is a bit of a strange way to go about it. Um, a bit of mesh there for the rear deck and um, a few small fixings. So that's a nice addition. And then we've got the decals, which are um, just white numbers and uh, tactical signs there, uh, symbols. And they're very nice, generally printed by cartograph. I can't quite see if that's written on there. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Dragon decals are, are never a problem. So that's a nice kit from Dragon there. Um, something a little bit different if you uh, are into your Panzers. Um, the initial production is one of the most sort of unlikely things that you, we would have um, expected to get released by uh, Dragon, but it's, um, it's a very nice addition. Um, so very good from my point of view uh, for doing the Spanish armour because this is the only type of uh, this vehicle that made it over there. Um, so my only option before this release was a, a resin, a complete new resin top deck that I think a company in America makes, which is a bit unlikely for me to get if I was honest. Um, so um, yeah, absolutely great in my opinion. Um, a bit of a niche thing for quite a lot of uh, modellers I imagine, but um, nevertheless if you want to add to um, your Panzer 1 collection, um, this is a nice addition. So that's kit number 6597, that's the Smart Kit uh, by Dragon of the SDKFZ 265 Kleiner uh, PZ BEF WG1 Initial Production. Uh, very nice kit. Dragon at its uh, best, I would say. Uh, there have been a few moments when Dragon have not uh, done so well in recent years, but uh, this is a good kit. So. Um, Check it out if you're interested.